Well, hello, Seattle. Uh, my name is Richard <laughs> Wesley. I'm uh, what they call an old duck. And uh, I've been working with uh, the team for a couple of years now, and I focus on sort of temporal analytics and other things. And one of the big things I work on is uh, the windowing operator. And people tend to use that a lot coming from scripting languages because they're very used to data being ordered. So it's been about two and a half years since we did any big deep dive into what we've been doing. So I thought I'd just run through it all. And this is gonna be very bottom of the, of the whole software stack as opposed to up at the top. So very quickly, since this is a lightning talk, we'll have a lightning summary. Uh, things we've done for functionality, we now have distinct aggregates that you can window. We have exclude clauses, we have the qualify clause. We've been doing a lot of work on performance uh, with something called partition fusion. We've cleaned up some of the vectorization performance and uh, we've added a streaming version for certain limited situations. And the thing I'm working on right now is we have this problem where we're using a lot of memory and we're sort of trying to reduce the amount of memory. And I'll go into that in a little more detail. But first, what is windowing? Uh, it's <laughs> in the old days of SQL, we had single row calculations. And this is great. You could just you do it one row at a time. You can produce a new attribute from a single row. You can stream it. You can parallelize it very easily. But about 25 years ago, people decided they wanted to try and do you know, multi-row calculations. And you want to produce a new attribute from adjacent rows. And the problem with this is that, well, SQL doesn't have a real definition of adjacent because sets are unordered. So the standards committee came up with a way of specifying this. And this is roughly what it looks like. You partition the data into independent blocks. You sort each block. And then you, for each row, you can say how far apart you are. And if this looks complicated, that's because it is. You have to sort, you have to break things up. It, it's, it takes a lot of time. So how this is implemented is with what are called window operators. And we have two of them. And the first thing we have to do is plan. And the first choice is, you know, can we stream or can we just materialize it? This depends on the functions. We split out the streamable ones and do those first. And the other thing is what we've done recently is we combine the partitions. So you can have two functions that say use the same partitions. Maybe they put them in the, the keys in the wrong, different order, or maybe they have fewer sort keys, including no sort keys, which I'll get to in a moment. So streaming, we can stream evaluation if there's if the data is already naturally ordered the way you need it and there's no other weird things going on. And uh, Lawrence did this couple of years ago, actually, and uh, I've recently gone and added filtering and distinct aggregation, and also lead and lag, because the most common values for lead and lag are uh, one. Now, the way the main operator works is we go in and we build these hash bins, and then we uh, separate all the rows out into the different partitions. And the way we used to then process them was like, oh, the data is all separated. Let's do one partition per thread. Unfortunately, this means that we've got all the data you need for all the partitions or a large number of them in memory at once. And this was causing all kinds of problems. So I took it upon myself to start this project to try and reduce that. And so what we're doing now is mostly doing one partition at a time, or sometimes if they're small, they can be clammed together. Now, computing things in parallel is easy, but the thing that's been uh, <laughs> the most challenging is building these data structures in parallel without them colliding with each other. But we're, we're most of the way there, and I'm hoping to have it all done for the 1.1 release. So that's the high-level operator, but then there's the individual functions, and we have these things called aggregation accelerators, uh, because if you try and just do like a moving average and you only you redo it every time, you're throwing away a lot of information. So people have come up with all of these techniques for doing this a lot faster and reusing information between rows. A uh, classic one is something called segment trees. We also had uh, something called uh, custom window APIs where the aggregate just says, hey, let me deal with this. Uh, in the last two years, we've added single value aggregation and merge sort trees, which I'll get to in a moment. And we've also gone and actually implemented naive aggregation because, well, you want to be able to check to see if these fancy algorithms work. And if you turn off the optimizer, that's what you will get. Uh, single value aggregation, a lot of times people have a partition with no ordering, and that just means 
you just have one aggregate value for the entire partition. And so you only need to compute it once and then copy it a lot. And we started doing that. And the last fun thing we've done is uh, the Windows has a framing order, but some aggregates need a different order. And if you want to do distinct aggregates, uh, you, it helps to have them sorted because then you can see when two values are in a row are the same. When you're doing quantiles or um, the mad aggregate function, this is also a thing. So we've got this data structure in there, which was published a couple of years ago on doubly ordered trees, which can get built and queried in parallel. And that's it. So, Thank you. Questions. Now. Questions? Yeah. So since we have someone like you who really knows the guts, it's awesome. Uh, what windowing functions are like the slowest and how would we know kind of some tricks to go towards some faster options? Like I was using row number recently really fast, but n tile was extremely slow. I added some math on top and I created my own buckets, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I could, I could look at n tile. Um, the problem with uh, things like n tile is that you're doing, you, you have to do comparisons to know when values are equal and that can be, a, we have bitmaps to do that, but it's still like not quite the same as row number. Uh, as far as aggregates go, um, the slow ones are the, um, uh, what they call holistic aggregates like quantiles, uh, mode and things like that. So, I don't know if that helps. Thanks, uh, any other questions? No? All right, thanks Richard again. Yeah.